episode 145. Today, we're going to talk about um, using imagination to bridge the roles um, that we want to play with the innate self um, of us so that we can open and expand our innate selves to fill the characters we want to play and to, to more able, more able, be able to do that. I'm Deborah Henson Conant, and I'm here with Kathleen Wiley. Kathleen is a Jungian psychoanalysis. Psycho, sorry, I haven't gotten to sleep. <laughs> is a psychoanalysis. Um, Kathleen is a, a Jungian psychoanalyst and, um, and also plays the harp. I am a composer, a performer, and I have an online school in which I teach harpists how to improvise. I also play the harp. And so we call this Young at Harp. And we invite you into a conversation every week about um, the, the things that we're looking at through um, the lens of uh, the methods that we're developing. So Kathleen has the online sacred circle, embodiment circle, and I'm looking through creative resonance and the strings of passion. We're looking together in conversation, inviting you into conversation, not to answer the questions, but to explore and discover through the questions. So Kathleen, shall I start by saying why I proposed this today? Yeah, I think that's okay. a great idea. <laughs> okay, so I'm working to develop leadership skills creative leadership skills. And um, in order to do that, I've jumped into a program where they kind of throw you in and let you flail around and um, lead. I'm leading a, a team of 58 people in realizing <laughs> their dreams. So it's a pretty big project and it's done mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. a specific structure. And what I'm discovering is that I um, I took on this position of leadership, like, sure, I'll do that. And I made a little diagram of, well, I'm gonna do it like this. And then um, I just like looked at it with like deer in the headlights of like, but how, how do I do that? And one of the beautiful things is I'm doing it with a team of other people who are also exploring and, and have big, you know, up to big things in life. And so I can ask them about it. But I also realized that there are characteristics of leadership that I simply don't have. I'm, or I, I don't have access to. I'm sure I have them within me. And there are all kinds of things. You give me a melody, I can do anything with it. You, you know, give me something to read and I can sing it. The, but when you give me a group of people and say, here's the structure and um, make sure that everybody knows what they have to do. And, you know, I am just like, blah, blah, blah. if I can't sing it, if I can't play it on the harp, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and so we were also talking about leadership. Like when I first started leading a band, mm -hmm when I was just learning how to be a jazz player and it was so clear that I, the, the players that I was hiring to play with me were head and shoulders above my abilities as a jazz player. And yet I was the leader and I couldn't understand that, you know, that just the discrepancy I always had is that the leader is the person who's the best at doing something. And then I had to understand that no, the leader is the one with the vision or the leader is the one who is taking on the vision and implementing the vision. And in the best world, they are in fact not the best players, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they are able to see and encourage and connect with the best players so that yeah. that, leader, that leadership brings something into the world that wasn't there before. So I'm trying to do it um, in a, a way of community because the thing that's really stopping me over and over again in all of my projects is where my creativity meets the fact that it, it there's a there's a bridge into the world mm -hmm. there's a difference between being able to be creative which i've spent my life doing and i teach other people to do and and then taking that creative product and getting it into a world in which creativity is not necessarily of value, but different things are of value. And, and so I, we were talking about it and I, I said, you know, I think I have that, I, I'm, I'm not able to access that part of my mind yet. I'm developing that access. Mm -hmm. And you, I was like, I'll bet you have some brilliant ideas about how I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, I'll tell you the, 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 what flashed for me 
when you were talking about not knowing how to work with the structure as the leader for these people that you're working with them on their projects, you said, if I don't know, if, if it's not singing or playing the harp, and I thought, how would you sing or play the harp to share the vision as the leader? I, I It just occurred to me, maybe the vehicle for you has something to do with singing <laughs> and the harp. Well, I, you know, I thought about that. I mean, I, I remember, I mean, when I learned to write for symphony orchestra, you know, I learned, I basically learned this same system, but I learned it from the composer's standpoint. So the system in an orchestra is that there are families and there are sections and there are section leaders. And those section leaders will work with their sections. And then the conductor is the leader and the composer creates the idea. And I, I am trying to use that here, but I've always been the composer. I've never been the section leader. You know, so I, so I, and, and, and when I have conducted, it's been of a chamber ensemble. So that's one little, you know, that's, that's like a, a six person team. But this now is like leading an orchestra where you have one, two, you know, four, six or seven different teams. You got your violin one team, you got your violin two team, you got your viola team, and then you got the big strings team and you got your woodwinds team, team you, got your, you know, and, um, I haven't mm. done that for particular part. So I don't even have the communications down. You know, when I go play with the symphony orchestra, I walk up to the percussion and I say, hey, this is what I had in mind as a composer. But I can't really do that in this in this particular situation. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, what I'm thinking about is vision. Where There's really a way we're talking about a vision. Um, you know, when we started talking about, because we were talk, circling around this off camera, about how can we use roles and characters and adopting a role or a character, or imitating a role or a right. character, um, to live into a part, an, an ability, a part of our own self that is yet to be expressed in the outer world. Right. And I said, you know, so in some ways, there's got to be a bridge. There's got to be a bridge between the energy within oneself that's the desire, the impulse, the vision to do it, and the manifestation of that in a particular role in the outer world. Right. Yeah. And I see that all the time in my students, that th these bridges. Um, and, and I think as you're saying this out loud, Kathleen, I'm thinking that one of the big things missing for me is the willingness to be super, super awkward, to experience myself as <coughs> completely inept. Mm -hmm. Because um, I'm thinking um, to make that, you know, when we come to an instrument and we're like, I wanna be doing, la, la, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna be feeling mm -hmm. like this, but all I can do is like this. <laughs> Um, sorry, there's like two, two different fingers. Yeah. And, and yet I, I asked everybody the other day in, in class. Um, so, so I have online classes and, and all, you know, there may be 40 people there, 40 harpists and everybody's, everybody's muted, but I can see, but I can see people. And I said to everybody, okay, so I want you to just play as if you can just, you're just, you know, you can play exactly the way you want. And, um, and I was trying to show, you know, one thing, but anyway, we turned, you know, I was watching everybody and one person was just like, ah, ah, like flying. And I was like, wow, what are you doing? And she was just like, I'm just imagining that I can play. Now, when I start putting my hands on the, my fingers on the, on the instrument, it all goes away. So I'm thinking, Kathleen, that for me, one of the things I need to do, one of the things that could help me, because I have this idea that I want to be like, hello, uh, you know, central. I want you to make sure that all the people down in, in group B have their things done. <laughs> like I want, that's, that's what I want to be able to do. But mostly I'm like, oh, crap, how do I find someone on my phone? <laughs> I don't have their phone number. <laughs> so I'm thinking that one of the things I might do is literally play like a kid. Like I can't do this yet, but I can pretend that like I'm doing like, I'm hello Siri, call Nevin now. <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly, until I did this, I never thought of using Siri. Uh -huh. and, and, mm -hmm. I, and, and I can play and then I can also experience the ineptness that I feel and just, and, and be within that space. I mean, yeah, I could, so I could, 
Yeah, go on, please. No, I was just going to say, it's making me think about, you know, um, the fifth string of passion, which is practices, practicing right. and practices, yeah, yeah. which to me is a piece of how we live into a new role or new character, strings three mm -hmm. and four, is mm -hmm. we're willing to practice, which means we will, we're willing to go through being awkward, to feeling inept about it, to stumbling around how do I, this desire that's on the inside, um, and this feeling, I mean, like the example you gave of the person who said she was pretending she was flying, but when she puts her fingers on the strings, it goes away. So mm -hmm. how to bridge felt sense right. in her body yeah. mind when she's away from the strings to when she puts her fingers on the string, right. you know, it's like, what severs the bridge to that energy? For me, my own projection is what severs the bridge, the connection for me is a fear of getting it wrong, a fear of not uh -huh. getting it right, stumbling, bumbling, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Right. So, uh, it, it, so somehow to be able to let go of that and just say, okay, I'm just going to fly. I'm flying from the string um, is lifting off from the earth versus lifting off from the air, you know, right. finding a right. bridge. Uh. Yeah. Oh, really interesting. Lifting off from the air. So two two things. First of all, I just wanted to let people know who are watching that there is, uh, if you're wondering what are the strings of passion, just because we're talking about string one, string two, uh, if you go to stringsofpassion.com, it, it actually at the top of the page, it'll say something about creative resonance, because when you use the strings of passion, you start getting creative resonance. But if you scroll down on that page, you'll actually see a little wheel where you see all of the strings and you'll see them um, drop downs where you can read about them. Um, so, you know, Kathleen, when I was, I learned harp as an adult, I was in my twenties and it was very painstaking, the technical coordination, mm -hmm. in part because I was trying to learn classical music and play with orchestras you know, at the same time I was, as I was literally learning the instrument. But I gave myself a treat at the, every, at the end of every day. And, and I'm thinking now, this is something I can bring in and you're telling me, you, you're bringing in the idea of practices. And that is what I did was I, first of all, I had a, a timer. I worked with a timer. I worked with a metronome. I did all these kinds of things to take away just so that I could focus on time. And I would practice something like, let, let's say I was playing, you know, Debussy. Well, no, that's, I don't know. Don't have a, a hello, wake up. I'd be in the tune. <laughs> okay. So something like, like, what? There's some like WC piece that so so in my practice I would be let's do that again a hundred times or whatever ten times but then at the very end of the day I would go and I would play the gesture of the mm -hmm. entire piece and that meant like I mean, like, th th there's no way in which that is Debussy's dances. But there's every way in which it is the intention or it is the, the living of it. But I do remember somebody walking in, a friend of mine walking in one day and said, what the heck are you doing? And at this point, I was playing Beethoven. I was playing, I was like, it's Beethoven. And he was like, my God, it sounds like Arnold Schoenberg. I mean, I'm, I, I was like, yes, but I'm, I'm playing Beethoven. I'm just not playing the notes. I'm... I'm just the best. I'm doing everything except playing the notes. And I'm realizing that that is something I can think about too. I can practice back and forth. The, the, the play, the play of being able and the reality of being inept. Yeah. And you know, what you're saying is I'm thinking about the word of play and the psychoanalyst Winnicott talks about the importance of play and developing. And our imagination is often, again, the vehicle of play. And so there is something about living into the roles that we want, um, whether it's and being the leader in this case for you that you want to be, that has to do with allowing yourself to play with what that might look like for you. 
we often get stuck because we try to imitate whatever the collective ideal is of what that looks like. And albeit there's a lot of value in imitation and learning someone else's way, that can be one way. It sometimes though keeps us blocking, get bumping up against a block because it's not the nuance of our way. You know, we have to find what is it that's our way. So we can learn all these other things, but then let it, um, let us play with our own experience, like what it is that we know about how we work and how we are able to bring things into the world. You know, as you're talking, I'm realizing that, you know, for me, there's always some kind of a character and, and often a characterization. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking that if I were to play with this, like the first one is going to be always Hello, Central. We need this, this, and you're gonna, and it's got that voice. I'm gonna But then the other one, I was like, okay, but is there another one? That, and you know, I'm always like one of my go-tos is the goddess Diana, the goddess mm -hmm. of the hunt. Um, in part because you know, she has something like a harp. It's a bow and arrow, but anyway, um, and so the goddess of the hunt would be like, all you dears. I want you to, you know, head of the deers, the st greatest stag, go tell the deers to, 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 to fly on. You know, like, I don't know if I'm imagining that that's what she would do. And I'm thinking if I had, you know, like two other characters of, of leadership in this role, you know, like I'm not Zeus. No, I'm not Zeus. And I do have to speak to Zeus but I am the goddess of the hunt. Is there another, you know, another archetype like that, that I could play with as well? Well, there are, I mean, there are lots of archetypes that you can, um, and, you know, fairy tales and myths tell us about, yeah. So who else, who else might, have, I mean, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? I don't know. Who, who, I mean, she, she didn't, really lead the seven dwarfs but and we have a wonderful message but it is in french so i don't know what it says right and, um something about 48 years looking for um oh i see it um, might it might be a marriage proposal i'm not sure okay so <laughs> but I, I won't put it up here oh, if it I is, love thank you <laughs> creative expressions here but it um, might be about connection i don't know so anyway, go on, Kathleen. <laughs> yeah, no, I um, I mean, I'm thinking about what's coming to my mind is I think, isn't it Oedipus who did, not Oedipus, who is it that created the first harp? He oh, came out and there guy? was the turtle oh. shell and put strings on it. Oh, I should. Um, he did? I didn't know that. Yeah, um, that, oh, we'll have to, I'll have to review, we'll have to Google that. But you that. know what, that's so interesting, Kathleen. Oh my God, I never thought about leadership as being strings. And yet the harp again, because there's families. I mean, there's there's the, the tonality of C and there's the tonality of, or sorry, of, of C major. There's the tonality of D Dorian. There's the tonality of, you know, but there's also all the Cs. And then there's mm -hmm. all the D's. So there's different teams. And then there's, of course, different teams on the instrument. Now I'm in the team of, I'm in the team of the F family. I mean, uh -huh. okay. I don't know what this is going to tell me. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, someone is asking me to play a song. Um, you're, someone's asking me to play the, the Nightingale. Um, that's an interesting thought. How might that relate to this conversation? Well, part of, we'll see what the viewer writes in, but part of what comes to my mind is you talk about how you for a number of years didn't play it because you didn't right. feel like it showed right. you off and showed off your skill right. set. And then you played it and one of your friends said you have to play it at every show. Right. And so perhaps there is something about the simplicity that sometimes we make things way too complicated. Mm -hmm. And that the bridge, the energy gets blocked because we think it has to be an elaborate system and an elaborate structure when what's really needed is the simplicity of the heart's expression. So I would love to try something right now, something we've never tried before. 
-hmm. I would like, and I have no idea how it will work, but I would love for you to talk about this as I actually play, just mm -hmm. like you just did as I play. So you are talking- such a tenderness of, what, what is it that really is moving? moving me moving you moving our viewers deep inside because the best leadership is something that begins deep within oneself in terms of one's values and one's integrity and one's own sense of creative vision that then can just flow forth and flow forth in a way that is showy because it isn't showy that is meaningful because it isn't flashy, but it is bright and illuminating because it's real. And it's real because it's rooted in what's deep and quiet inside one's own nature. And one of our viewers says, as I grow in life, Sometimes I feel I've lost my voice and I think of this song that it should inspire me to regain my voice and that the song is inspiring and moves me like a prayer. And thank you, Deborah. And it moves us like a prayer because it is a prayer because it's not something that is sought after as the glittering gold of the outer world and the way it should be. But it's something that's real and true to what's rooted in your own life experience. So it resonates with each of us and what's rooted in our life experience. And that's the bridge that we need in order to bring our deepest self and creative expression into the outer world. Our, our voices, is that what you're saying, Kathleen? Yeah. And a voice that's deep, deep, deep within one's own nature. Not that's acquired through everything we learn, or think we should be or do or how to do it, but that's deep, deep within one's own truth. Yeah. And we have another viewer saying, yes, Nightingale moves me to tears every single time I hear it or sing it on the heart. Tears, tears move our psychic energy forward in the world. Hmm. So maybe, because I know our time is up, um, my takeaway for today is that the bridge means that we are allowing the um, tears of our mm -hmm. own being to move us forward from the inside to the outside. Because the tear contains the essence Beautiful. And I will take that we can take, we can take a song, we can take even one song like this. And even one, one progression and use that as the bridge. Those two things, the tears and the voice to connect the inside and the outside. And, and I'll just take that as a practice. I'll take that as a practice mm -hmm. out of this session. And then I know we're not going to be here next week, but we'll be here the week after. Mm -hmm. And, um, and take it on and, and then share what, what opened up for me. And I invite everyone else to do that, to take on, you can take on this song even, just even not the whole song, but even just the first, you know, 
I mean, it's the nightingale, and I'm sure mm -hmm. you can find it um, in, at, at different shops around the world. Don't even have to play the whole song, just play the part, just enough to touch, and then make that connection. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, thank you. Thank you so much for that request. What an experience. Mm -hmm. I never experienced quite like this. And, uh, <laughs> and someone's saying, Okay, that okay, and 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 also to realize that 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 I may play it on a funky purple harp. So <laughs> the, the body in which we do this, we have all that character, the funky, the tender, and and to search for that and bring that out, and that's what you and I are about, Kathleen. Right. That's so right. thank you, and thank you for you know bringing us even closer to that today, and we'll see you in two weeks. And mm -hmm. go forth and harp on the character within and what that brings out through tears, through music, through joy, through funky things that you play. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>